And do you have a waiting room? Um, yes, I can see participants coming in now. We're up to 19. It looks like everybody's, you know, starting to come in. There go your captions. That's good. Okay, good. All right, it is noon. So, okay, since it's noon, um, we're going to go ahead and get started. My name is Carrie Potter. I work with Family Matters Parent Training Information Center as an educational support coach. And um, I just want to say as Family Matters um, does not offer any form of legal services, so any information you gain from Family Matters or today's presentation should not be considered as such um, due to the volume of number of registrants we have, go ahead and um, we'll take questions at the end. Just go ahead and put those questions in the Q&A box today, and then we will go through those at the end of the webinar and answer those. And then this webinar is being recorded and will be archived on the Family Matters website. A PowerPoint has been put in the chat. You should be able to access that and download it if you want a copy of that. Um, there will be a survey at the end, so please take time to take that survey. It'll just take you probably under a minute and just let us know, give us feedback on the presentation and, you know, things you'd like to learn in the future. And then um, I think we will go ahead and get started. Um, Jessica Schuyler Weir has been with the Illinois Assistive Technology Program for the last 15 years. She holds a master's degree in assistive technology and human services, as well as um, the Assistive Technology Professional Certification from Resna. I hope I said that correctly. Um, she has completed over 1,000 assistive technology evaluations for customers of Illinois Vocational Rehabilitation Program and through IATP's Illinois State Board of Education grant. And Jessica currently serves as IATP's training manager. And so thank you, Jessica, for joining us and presenting today. I am going to turn it over to you. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you to Family Matters for um, having us and allowing us to talk to you today about assistive technology. Um, okay. And I don't see participants. We've got, I, I see a, a number going up. Okay. We've got 40 folks so far. Is that right? Okay, great. All right. Um, so to get started, um, if you guys are all able to see my uh, PowerPoint, if you're not able to see it, please jump into the chat and let us know that uh, you're having a, an issue. And again, if you have a question, if you can go ahead and put it in the chat, that would be great. Normally, I would say just interrupt me, but there's a lot of us today, apparently, which is awesome. Uh, so if we can hold questions, as uh, Carrie said, to the end, that would be great. All right. And let's see if I can make my PowerPoint work. And it looks like I can. So first of all, who are we? We are the Illinois Assistive Technology Program, or IATP for short. And we are a statewide not-for-profit agency that's been responsible for implementing the Assistive Technology Act since 1989. So we were one of the uh, first states funded, and we are a little bit different than a lot of other states as we have our own not-for-profit agency, a standalone not-for-profit agency. Um, we are not tied to a university or another state office like the VR program. Um, instead, we have our own, um, our, we are our own entity. ITP promotes the availability of assistive technology devices and services for people with disabilities and other health conditions. So who do we serve? IATP offers person-centered services to all people with disabilities in the state of Illinois, their families, service providers, state agencies, private industry, educators, and other interested individuals, regardless of age or income. And what that basically translates to is we serve anybody who is interested in assistive technology. We are the primary resource in the state for basic information about what assistive technology is and what's available. And we're going to get into our programs. We have quite a few of them. We've grown a lot over the last few years. So if you knew us 10 years ago, you surely don't know us today because it is a completely different agency than we were just a few years ago um, with the incredible growth and in programs that we have um, developed. 
So the Assistive Technology Act has some core services that all uh, assistive technology programs are supposed to implement, and we do um, have a component for each of these. And we're going to get into a little bit more detail on some of these, including our Assistive Technology Demonstration Center, our Device Loan Program, Assistive Technology Reuse, our State Financing Activities, which that really doesn't it's not necessarily about money. We're not loaning money, but something else. Uh, training, technical assistance, information and assistance and assistive technology support and public awareness and outreach. So some of this we're doing right now, like public awareness and outreach. So um, then there are the other services that we have, and these are provided through leveraged funding. And what that really means is these would be grant programs that um, the Illinois Assistive Technology Program um, has acquired and we manage and implement. One of those is going to be probably important to the crowd we're talking to today is servicing the Illinois State Board of Education or ISBE with device loan and assistive technology and alternative and augmentative communication evaluation services. So um, there will probably be some people on um, our webinar today who maybe have already been involved in one of these uh, evaluations, but that program has been around for a little bit over 10 years and and has really uh, taken hold. Um, AT and home modification evaluations for vocational rehabilitation and home services through the Illinois Department of Human Services. So that's people that are receiving services through DRS, whether it be employment related or home services for personal care attendance. We do evaluations for each of those. The work incentives planning and assistance or the WIPA, <laughs> and we'll get into a little bit more of that later, what that means. Um, the Illinois Care Connections, or ICC, and that's through the Illinois Department on Aging. They fund that particular program. And the Center for Assistive Technology Act Data Assistance, or CATADA, which is the administrative stuff, and that's boring, and that's data, and we won't talk about that anymore other than it is a, one of the programs that we have. Okay, so what is assistive technology? That's really the first question. And if you were to look at the AT Act and you were to read their definition of assistive technology, it is long and it is rambling. And you've probably lost track of what it said at the beginning by the time you get to the end. So we've divided it kind of into two statements. And the first of those is the definition of an assistive technology device. And that's going to be any item, piece of equipment, or product system, whether acquired commercially off the shelf, modified or customized that is used to increase, maintain, or improve functional capabilities of individuals with disabilities. So this is the device definition of assistive technology and probably where most people's minds go when we say assistive technology, the hard technologies, things like wheelchairs and AAC devices. But then there's also the definition of an assistive technology service. So assistive technology service is any service that directly assists an individual with a disability in the selection, acquisition, or use of an assistive technology device. And this is the soft technologies, the things like who are the people, who are the programs that are involved, uh, things like uh, maybe a sign language interpreter might be considered um, a um, service definitely not a device. Okay. So then getting into uh, the various programs, some of them that we're gonna highlight uh, include the demonstration center. So it was earlier this week, I was talking to somebody from Family Matters and they said that they had been to our demonstration center here in Springfield and compared it to being like an assistive technology Disneyland. <laughs> And that was a great uh, way to put it. Um, our demonstration center is pretty big. Uh, there is hundreds and hundreds of devices. And when you go for a tour, you can also look at our makerspace, our smart home, our tech kitchen. You will be hours before you are entirely through our demonstration center. It's located in Springfield. And since we've moved to our new building, we have lots of space. Um, however, if you can't come to Springfield, that's okay. They can arrange to bring devices to you. So if there is a device that you really want to see demonstrated or a type of device, uh, they can pack it up, hit the road, and come and see you. And they would then be able to um, show you everything, compare things where you're at. Device demonstration provides hands-on exploration and the opportunity to compare features of similar devices and you can discuss with an expert what your needs are and learn about possible solutions that might meet your needs. And we have some pictures at the right here. Um, the top right picture there is one of our occupational therapy practitioners working with somebody looking at our CCTVs. So those would be our um, large um, video CCTVs. 
those are really expensive devices. Now you only can see two or three of them here in this picture, but there's a, a room that has quite a few of them and being able to come and compare those devices side by side is something that's it's, it's extremely useful, particularly if you're going to pay for one of those devices yourself. They can cost between $3,000 and $5,000, depending on what features are there. So sitting down, looking at it, and having a chance to really use it is really important in that decision making. We also have a picture of um, one of the bathroom areas, and we, of course, have a cute little girl there that's uh, playing with uh, some of the toys. So we have a lot of toys as well here, a lot of uh, accessible toys. They have tried to divide the demonstration center up into areas that make sense by type of device. So we have, um, divi what I like about this though also is that, so like if we say that we have the vision area and then right below that we have listed learning and cognition development, a lot of the devices that are in the vision area are also really helpful to our learners with disabilities or people with IDD. So there's a lot of crossover, but anyway, they've tried to divide them for, in areas that the the purpose they were manufactured for. So we have vision, hearing, speech communication, learning, cognition and development, mobility, seating and positioning, daily living, environmental adaptations, computers and related items, and then a recreation, sports and leisure area as well. Some of our vision devices um, here, we again, we have a, another photo of some of our uh, CCTVs, our handheld magnifiers. We have dozens and dozens of those, and it is not at all uncommon to find people sitting at our big table in the demonstration center, just comparing them, figuring out which device is going to work best. And then some of our electronic magnifiers there are the far picture on the right. And a little point of interest that is, I, I just think that this is um kind of cool and it kind of tells you how long we've been around uh, that cute little baby there that is on the CCTV there on the left she is now a doctor of occupational therapy who works in our tech kitchen so <laughs> our uh, we've been around for I guess th a long time 30 years hearing devices so here is a little snapshot of our hearing area it's a little bit bigger than this but uh, on the left there we have an area that's got devices such as some of the bed shakers the um, sonic boom alarm clocks, the assistive listening devices, the flashing alarm systems. In the center is a device called the Ubi Duo, and that is designed for uh, someone who is deaf or hard of hearing to be able to talk to somebody who is hearing through a live chat. And we have an, a good area with lots of different phone adaptations. And here we have two of the large print display caption phones and some uh, brochures about those services and how they work as well to help you better understand if you're thinking about getting a caption phone. Our speech and communication devices, uh, we have an eye gaze system, which is not pictured here, and that's probably one of the most popular things in the demonstration center. Within just a minute or two of calibration, most people are able to play some games like tic-tac-toe and things like that with their eyes, and it's sort of a... Um, it's a mind-blowing technology when you realize the things that can be done just by moving your eyes. Uh, but here pictured also are some of our more standard AAC devices and some of our toys over here as well. We've got a couple of robots, um, a couple of interactive pets, and various devices that are also located in that area. Uh, the developmental and sensory room um, is pictured here, and this is a pretty cool place to hang out. This place is like a magnet to children. In fact, I kind of like to hang out in this room too. It's very soothing. Uh, um, as you can see, there's a lot of our toys, um, the different um, sensory devices are in here as well. Um, we have quite a few toys <laughs> here at the Illinois Assistive Technology Program. Uh, they are one of the ways that a lot of children learn to use their devices is through switch activated toys, so we have a big selection of those. And learning and development devices, here's just a little selection of those as well. Uh, some of the uh, different light up letter boards, uh, the visual timers, if you've ever seen a visual timer in a classroom, we've got lots of examples of those. Uh, the different watch minders, um, some of the reading pens are also here that you scan the text and it reads it out loud to you. Again, you can compare all of these items with um, what it's similar manufacturers and figure out, you know, what the differences are and if you like one or the other. Uh, computer access devices. I, I really like this area of the demonstration center. Um, if you're looking for an adaptive mouse or a keyboard that is um, has some adaptations, I, there are just dozens of choices here. 
um, and with the different configurations that we can do with switches and some of the switch boxes we have, we can typically hook up just about any configuration you can imagine for a mouse or a keyboard. We also have a lot of software on the computers that uh, will provide voice recognition, access for screen readers for people who are blind or visually impaired. Uh, we can demonstrate most anything in this area and it's just a pretty cool place to visit. Um, we even have um, mouse options here that you can use your feet for. Um, we have a head mouse, all kinds of things. Mobility devices take up a lot of space, so we don't have a lot of them in the demo center, but if you were to come in and you were interested in a particular type of device, we have more of them in the building, and we would be able to find a few more for you to look at. Um, here we have an example of a couple of different types of walkers and a little adaptation there in the center that uh, is on one of the kitchen chairs that's in our smart home, just some wheels there on the bottom that make it a little bit easier to move the chair around. And our assisted assist devices, excuse me, very similar situation. They take up a lot of space, but we do have um, them spread out throughout the demo center and in the smart home. And we can um, bring out more if it's something that you want to see. But uh, we have some chair lifts here. We have this little lift over here on the right that will help get someone off the floor. And um, we uh, recently had a, a gentleman in the demo center who was so excited to see this because he was no longer able to lift his adult daughter off the floor and that was something she liked to do during the day was to be out of her wheelchair on the floor so he was thrilled to see this and was working on figuring out how he and his wife could get one of these in their home kitchen tools uh, we have hundreds <laughs> so many kitchen tools here at the Illinois assistive technology program and pictured here we have some of the different plates and built up silverware choices we have talking scales and rocker knives and of gloves and um, what we don't have there down there making in the makers program. We'll talk about that program in a moment, but if the adaptation isn't quite right, if you've gone through the hundreds of different uh, choices that we have and it's still not quite the right thing, uh, you know, the makers can sometimes uh, figure out what needs to be done to that device or what needs to be added to it in order to make it uh, more accessible to the user. Our bathrooms, we got a couple of them, one in the smart home, and we've got one in the demonstration center. We have an example here of uh, the, on the left there, of a fairly affordable uh, bathtub lift. So this is, you can see the little remote control there. So this is a good option for somebody that has trouble getting in and out of the tub and has a standard bathtub. In the center there on the vanity, we have all kinds of choices for different types of pill dispensers. There's a, that black box looking thing right there is actually a computerized pill dispenser that um, can be filled, I think, at a week or a month at a time. So it, it can be very useful for somebody that forgets to take their meds. And um, example of a slider board over here on the bathtub. But again, we have so many of these items. We can't have them all out, but if you were interested in them, we certainly would get more out for you to see if you came to visit us or we came to you. Uh, recreation and leisure. We have a couple of slides here. This is an area that's been growing in our demonstration center. Um, we've been getting more toys, more fun things to do, more gardening tools. Um, here on the left, you can see one of the adaptive bikes. Uh, it's a, a trike with two wheels in the front. Um, in the center, we've got some of the games. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen this dice spinner. That's this round device that's out here um, that's blue and white. Uh, that is funner than throwing dice. So if you have that involved in a game, and because you have a child with a disability that can't throw dice, every kid's going to use it because it's way funner than throwing dice. <laughs> so uh, we like to um, introduce people to these things uh, so that they can see them, tr maybe try them out, take them home. On the right here, we've got... Uh, some of the really low cost solutions. So you can see some of the card holders down there that are made from things like pool noodles. So this is another uh, great thing that you get sometimes from our demonstration center. We've got a lot of the do-it-yourself stuff that you could just go home and make for low cost or no cost and have a usable piece of assistive technology. And here's another picture of some more of our recreation tools. You can see our gardening tools there on the left. We have some that have the, the upper arm cuff supports. Uh, we have the extended tools. Um, in the center there, we have the guided hands uh, drawing bird. That thing's pretty fun if you've ever um, used it. It's a... Uh, pretty cool for somebody that's not really able to hold a pencil or a pen, but they can put their hand on top of it and guide it around. And we, of course, have all of our games that are um, 
adapted for people who may have trouble moving small pieces. A lot of them have braille attached to them as well. Okay, so we'll talk about device loan. Oh, this is a, this is a program that um, could benefit pretty much anyone that lived in the state of Illinois and wanted to try out a product in their home. All of those things in the demonstration center, we do not have all of those things in device loan, but we do have hundreds and hundreds of devices. So you can try all devices to support informed decision making. You can use a device as a backup while you're waiting for repair. So if a device that you use every day has to go back to the manufacturer to be repaired, you don't necessarily have to be without it. You could instead borrow it from us in the meantime. Um, used to ensure compatibility between the device and the user. So you want to make sure this is the right thing before anybody invests in it. And it's used by therapists to conduct evaluations. There are some very expensive devices, particularly AAC devices, that require a device trial period before they will be funded. So a therapist can borrow a very expensive uh, communication device for a trial period and meet that criteria that the funder is going to say, you know, we, we have to know this is going to work and they have to use it for this many weeks. Well, we can do that. They can do that by borrowing it from us. And it's available to anyone in Illinois. Devices are loaned for a period of up to six weeks and devices can be picked up or we can ship devices to you at no cost. Uh, the only time that there would ever be a cost incurred to the borrower is when you return it to us. And if that is a problem, we can usually work out some other arrangements to get it back to us. Um, we'll talk more about that when we get to the Illinois State Board of Education grant, but this is a great program. So um, if you wanna think about borrowing a device before buying it, that is always recommended. Our assistive technology reuse program provides new and pre-owned assistive technology and durable and medical equipment to persons who cannot afford to purchase new or if it's not covered by insurance. So this program has blossomed over the last few years and grown into... <laughs> We don't have enough space. We never have enough space for reuse. Uh, recipients can keep devices for as long as needed. So this is an open-ended loan. If you need the device for three years, then you keep it for three years. If you need it for a short rehab period, and then you want to return it to us, we will take it back. We accept gently used equipment for donation and all donations are properly sanitized prior to um, being uh, redistributed. So if, for example, a shower chair came into us, it would go through our big Aquaphor washer, which is basically a big device washing machine. And today, uh, kind of exciting, we got a second Aquaphor machine delivered. I could see it out my window at the loading dock. Um, it's bigger than our other ones, so we're going to be able to put bigger devices in there. Basically, they strip off anything electronic or cloth, and they put it in there and sanitize it. So um, when things come out, they're ready to um, be redistributed to the public. State financing. Uh, what is that? It isn't really clear what that means exactly, but we'll get into a little bit more of what it means here. And what we have, what we're going to talk about is the smart home technology, our tech kitchen, and our makers program. And these three programs provide assistive technology to customers at no cost. Uh, it's, it, well, I should say a cost savings, but typically it is a no cost experience. So starting with the smart home program. Um, smart home technology has, of course, also really boomed over the last few years, and for people with disabilities, it can be a big game changer. Um, we have a simulated, fully functioning smart home in the demonstration center. So you come through the front door into the living room, you work your way past the laundry room, into the dining room, the kitchen, the bathroom, the bedroom, it's all there, and it's completely furnished and filled with devices. Um, evaluations provided to targeted groups to determine appropriate smart home technology. And when we say targeted groups, we mean um, primarily those evaluations are going to people who have uh, cases with our state's vocational rehabilitation program through DRS, people who are served by home services and other managed care organizations are um, the where most of the evaluation services are happening. But again, all demonstration services are available to anybody who's interested to see this. If you can come to the smart home also, it's a great tour. Here's a picture of our smart home and uh, the kitchen is there on the left and the picture does not do it justice. <laughs> all of the cabinets are amazing. They open up that the upper cabinets have um, little units that you don't take much pressure at all. You just pull on them and they lift down, everything pulls out. 
um, most of our devices there, most of the um, appliances are voice activated. Here in the center, you can see someone using the refrigerator in our smart home. And I think the fridge is my favorite thing to demonstrate. When someone comes to the front door of the smart home and you can see it standing open over here in this picture, you can see them on the fridge through the camera. Um, you can ask the refrigerator to show you what's inside and it will keep track of what's in there. We have a plastic pear in there that it's quite, that the refrigerator is quite sure that it is rotten and we should throw it away. <laughs> because it's been in there for months. <laughs> it doesn't know it's plastic, but it will keep track of uh, what's inside your refrigerator and let you know if you need to buy things. Um, it's also hooked up to our sink, which is amazing. I can tell the refrigerator to tell Moen, which is the name of our faucet, to distribute one cup of water at whatever temperature I tell it to. And as soon as it's ready, the faucet will um, flash around the ring and all I need to do is touch it and it will distribute. Um, the water. So that type of um, connectivity is amazing. Um, and again, a huge game changer for a lot of people with disabilities. Our tech kitchen. Um, this is an example, or actually this is a picture here, I should say, of our teaching kitchen. And um, a lot of the same features in this kitchen, all of the cabinets um, do the same thing. We have, again, the um, smart refrigerator in here, the smart faucet, all of that is here. And uh, this is the, the home style kitchen classroom showcases accessibility tools to make cooking possible, easier and safer. Uh, there are free classes are based on participants goals and include cooking, baking, nutrition, budgeting, menu planning and more. So people actually come into the kitchen and they learn all kinds of skills and are able to try out all the different kitchen devices as well, the different types of knife. Knife safety is a big deal. And um, this is a good place, a good safe place to come and learn to use some of those devices. And here we've got a picture of someone uh, cooking over, um, I forget what they call this particular little cooktop right here, but this is the, the portable one also that they take to people's homes when they're cooking. And here's a good example over here, this picture on the right, you can see the pull out cabinets down there and the pull down from the top to um, kind of demonstrate how they are accessible. Okay, the IETP makers, I love the makers. <laughs> they provide assistive technology uh, for those who have a need for fabricated devices, particularly through 3D printing, pressure forming and laser cutting. So they uh, primarily is 3D printing stuff, but they also do make some other things. And pictured here is this little stand that has this measuring uh, device and the tube coming from it. And this is actually um, for somebody who had a feeding tube. And um, she was able to mix up her own food mixture and she was able to put it into the tube and hook up everything, but was unable to sit holding the tube in the, in the right uh, configuration for long enough in order for her to finish eating. So she could do every step of it except continue to hold the tube. So there was nothing out there on the market that was made to do this. So the makers went to work and they came up with a custom little holder. And that's what's pictured here. Here. So from start to finish now, this person is able to completely uh, feed herself. And that's, that's, that's actually pretty powerful. So another picture here from the Maker's Lab. Uh, these are some of the 3D printers at work making various things. On the left there, there's a check uh, guide. There's a a little device there that you would use to help you put a seat belt on, um, a little bag carrier. That's what that green hook is right there. You can see a 3D map that they printed back there. Uh, the makers are working with me. Um, I have one hand and I have always wanted to be able to play the guitar and we're on iteration number three of my prosthetic guitar pick. <laughs> so they do amazing work in the makers lab. And they are they're located just off the demo center. You can see them when the printers are printing in there. It's pretty impressive. Okay, our ISBE, Assistive Technology and AAC Evaluations and Loans. So this program, um, I'm going to bet that we probably have got somebody out there on the webinar right now who has been involved in one of these evaluations. Um, they are available at no cost to schools statewide on a first come first serve basis. Both assistive technology and AAC evaluations are available for students aged 
3 to 22 that live in Illinois. Um, they recommend assistive technology and AAC devices be loaned to schools for a six-week trial. And training is provided on assistive technology and AAC as required to school personnel and parents. So this is um, a program. The evaluation is requested by the school. Uh, they fill out the evaluation packet, and then um, we would come out at no cost to the school to do the evaluation and help determine what the right uh, recommendations might be. And again, we're going to go back to that device loan program because this is a big deal here. When our AAC evaluators are out there and they figure out they've narrowed it down to these AAC devices and they want to trial one, the devices are available. They're able to get them from us for six weeks. They can go into the school with it, set up the trial period, and that is a huge step toward getting that device funded. And same with the assistive technology stuff. Um, if the student needs something that the district doesn't already have available, they can borrow it from us, try it out, figure out if this is indeed the right fit for this student in this particular educational environment. And of course, we have a picture here of a little guy using a device who is adorable. <laughs> Okay, vocational rehabilitation evaluation fast track program. This is a program that I worked in for many years. And um, again, this is kind of a life changing one as well. Uh, assistive technology specialist or ATS staff provide assistive technology and home modification evaluations for DHS DRS customers. The focus is on employment and independent living needs of the customers. And the Fast Track is a bulk purchasing program that provides a cost savings to the state and ensures timely delivery of equipment to customers. There's individualized training on assistive technology devices and follow up services. So the best example I can give here, uh, particularly for the employment aspect of this is um, an assistive technology specialist would be asked to come out and do an evaluation when that person is getting ready to go to a vocational training program, a college, or they're at work and they need assistive technology. Um, we would be able to do the evaluation, make recommendations, and in some cases through the fast track program, actually provide the equipment the day we come out to see them. So this is this is a huge improvement <laughs> over um, how things used to work, where recommendations would be made, and then months could go by before the state was able actually actually to make the purchase. Instead, we've bought lots of stuff um, up front that we know is going to be used. Also, the ability to make special purchases because not everybody fits into that same cookie cutter mold of what's available. So we do make special purchases. But this is uh, turned around the time between evaluation and receiving the equipment to most often the same day. Work incentives, planting, planning and assistance. So this is our, our WIPA program. And the work incentives, planning and assistance program for individuals receiving SSI and SSDI. And what this program does is it explains social security work incentives and other state and federal benefits. Is there anything more confusing <laughs> than understanding your social security benefits and what happens if you go to work? So this is open to Anyone between the ages of 14 and retirement receiving social security disability benefits who wants to go to work. It um, is often considered a disincentive because there's a lot of fear about what's going to happen if I go to work. Am I going to lose my medical card? What will happen to my insurance? And what a benefits analysis does is it explains exactly what will occur when you begin to make money. It introduces uh, the recipients to different options for health benefits for workers with disabilities so that they're able to make that transition and they're doing it in an informed way. And the Illinois Care Connections, um, this is a program that uh, came around during the pandemic and um, it provides assistive technology solutions to seniors age 60 and older receiving services through the Illinois Department on Aging provider agencies. Uh, the focus of the program is to enable social connectedness, maintain health, safety, and well-being, and promote independence and community living. We have occupational therapy, physical therapy, and assistive technology specialist staff who work directly with seniors in identifying assistive technology options to trial, assistive technology uh, devices available for loan to ensure effective 
to ensure they are effective and will be used. I think that might be a typo. And they provide assistive technology training and technical assistance on devices. We follow up after six weeks to make sure that this is right. And if the device is appropriate and helpful, the senior can keep it for as long as they need it. So again, this is going to be an open-ended loan for them to use as long as they like. When the program first began, it was a connectedness and social well-being program. And uh, we primarily providing iPads and Android devices to make sure that seniors could stay connected during a time when they were very isolated. And it has, we see two very happy seniors here on the right who have their devices, um, but it has now expanded into a lot more than just those devices. It's um, the, the things for um, independence around the house, um, I know that they just got uh, some durable medical equipment, like some walkers and things like that, and some computers, uh, things of that nature, depending on what that particular um, individual might need. And we're getting near the end here. So um, other services, things like training on accessibility and information and communication technologies, things like accessible documents and websites. That's the thing I've been doing a lot of lately, accessible document creation. Um, you were provided with a PDF of this presentation and it is accessible. So if you were a person who used a screen reader or that type of technology, you should be able to access every part of this presentation, which we think is extremely important. Everything that we distribute from the Illinois Assistive Technology Program, we try to ensure that it's accessible. And we like to try to teach other agencies how to do that as well, how to make sure their programs and services are accessible. Presentations about IATP services, programs, and device demonstrations are available, as we've talked about. Tours of the AT Demonstration Center, Smart Home, Makers in the Tech Kitchen, and professional development on all sorts of topics are available. Now, I have talked really fast, <laughs> and I know that I did because I wanted to make sure that we got through all of the programs. But if Carrie is still around, I see Abby is here too. Um, I would be more than happy to take any questions that you guys have. I see some things have popped up in the chat and um, up there on the screen right now is my information. That is my email address. That is the main phone number to our office. And of course, our website is listed there as well. Um, if you email me, tell me you were on this presentation and I will know um, who you are and we will um, hook you up with any information that you need. But are there any questions I can answer right now? So um, that was a great presentation. I appreciate it, you sharing all that information. There's just so many ton. avenues no, of no. support that you can receive from IATP. And mm -hmm. um, we do have some questions. It looks like I had one here. Um, if I can find it back, sorry. I could probably okay, look at here's the chat one too. from the chat. It, the rest are in the Q and A, I think. But the first one is just: Is it free delivery for the AT reuse program? Uh, so AT reuse, yes. So uh, if you need a device and it's a big device, we don't expect you to, to come and get it. Particularly if you're a person with a disability, um, you know how would you how would you get to Springfield to get that? So we we have the big IATP reuse van. <laughs> it's wrapped in IATP and um, they will deliver um, whatever the device happens to be to you and help you set it up and make sure that it's a good fit. Okay. Um, let's see. The next question is, do you have to have an appointment to come to the demonstration center? You do not. You can walk-ins are absolutely welcome. Although if there is something specific that you want to see, it is good to call ahead. Then we can make sure that we have somebody available to work directly with you, and we will make sure it is the most knowledgeable staff person that we have in that day on that particular topic. Every now and then I get called down to talk about voice recognition technology or vision stuff or whatever it is, because they know that that's an area I got experience in. So if I'm in the building, um, I'll help. But you don't have to have an appointment, but it's good to call ahead to make sure that the person you need to talk to is here. Um, do you help families find possible funding resources or sources if insurance does not cover the devices? Yes, we do talk about um, funding options. And in an instance, uh, reuse is, this, this is a place where reuse really does come into um, an important role. When a thing is not covered and a family can't get it, but they can't afford it, then we start looking to see if it's something that we've got in reuse or we can get, or we start looking at other um, choices, other funding options. So yes, we will 
try to figure out if there's a program you fit into. And if there isn't, then we'll start looking at um, options like reuse. Okay. Um, the next question is, do you have wheelchairs available for the reuse program? They do have some mobility devices. Uh, we ha have occupational therapists and physical therapists now on staff. So um, that has become a much smoother process in terms of fit and figuring out what you need. Um, we don't have anybody who is doing seating and mobility specifically. So if you need custom seating, again, you should probably see um, a certified seating and mobility specialist, but we do have a variety of wheelchairs, wheeled mobility devices, uh, scooters, things like that around here. So if you wanted to come and check those out, talk with one of our occupational therapists, they might be able to hook you up with a device that's a pretty good fit. Okay, so the next one is how is the interactive, it says pet in the communication used? The interactive what? It says pet. I don't know if that's a typo in the communication used. I'm not, not sure. sure if, if you want to retype that one, um, if that is your question, feel free to retype that. Um, there is a question about the hours for touring. Oh, yeah. We open at 8 in the morning, and uh, we close at 4.30, so you definitely want to come before 4.30. But um, to get through everything downstairs, I would definitely say at least two hours. There is a lot down there. <laughs> we toured recently from here at work at Family Matters and, you know, there's a lot to take in and it does take time. So, it does. It, and it's amazing to see it all. And, you know, it really gives you ideas on how, how you can accommodate and use assist, assistive technology. It's really amazing. And again, um, I don't know how many people on this call are from Southern Illinois, but a, you know, uh, how many times have you been told you have to go to Springfield or you have to go to Chicago to get that service or see those devices? They will pack up and come to you. So this is this is another thing to keep in mind. If you have a type of device you want to see, they'll load up the van and head to wherever you are and show you all of those devices. Okay, so do you help families um, work with speech therapists in obtaining an eye gaze device for a child that has aged out of the educational system but has long-term disabilities and would benefit with eye gaze device but has Medicaid? All right, so that is the great the chasm where wh wh who fills those services when you didn't go toward voc rehab and you <laughs> went out into the community to live and you've aged out of um the three to 22 services. And the answer is that we are, we're trying to figure this out. We do have um, some speech and language pathologists on staff that may be able to help. Um, so if this is something that you're interested in, do reach out to us. I can't say for certain that they would be able to help you, know, you in your specific situation, but there is a need for exactly the type of um, person getting the type of device you've just described. And we know that. So um, please reach out to us and we will see um, what we can do. We do have some speech and language pathologists, like I said, that don't work specifically on the ISBE grant. And they may be able to help. Okay, so the next question is, have you worked with other nonprofits like child, wel child welfare agencies that are trying to stabilize families? I don't know directly. Um, if I'm certain that we probably have. Um, I don't know of any working relationships like that we have though that are established. It would, if we have, it would be a case by case basis, I think. And then someone asked, did I miss how the program can assist with IEP meetings? Okay. So, um, we recently suffered an, a tremendous loss. <laughs> Our IEP advocate, Susie Woods, who I'm not going to cry. Uh, some of you, we had her um, celebration of life this past Saturday. She passed away um, at the end of last year. Um, Susie went to hundreds of IEPs a year, and um, we're trying. We're we're trying to figure out what to do. Um, if you've had an evaluation. So if you've had an AT evaluation or an AAC evaluation, whoever performed that evaluation would be part of the IEP team. So they would definitely be available 
for the IEP meeting and could come and talk about the assistive technology and what the recommendations are. But as far as just IEP support goes, that is a, that, those are shoes that we're not going to be able to fill, but we're trying to figure out how to address that. And I think, yeah. as, you know, we can't always attend meetings, things like that, because we cover yeah. at Family Matters, cover a large volume mm -hmm. of counties. We cover 90 counties in the state, but you can contact us. We can provide support in helping families prepare for IEP meetings and things like that. And we're collaborating with IATP. I mean, like she said, um, you know, it's a tremendous loss with losing. It is. And, it is. Um, she did great things and helped so many families. And I mean, I've known her over the 18 years that I've worked with Family Matters. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it is a huge loss, but, you know, if you have IEP questions, I mean, definitely reach out to IETP, yes. you know, as far as assistive technology support, see what they can do, but also remember to contact your parent center if you don't reside in one of our 94 counties, FRCD or the Family Resource Center on Disabilities covers a handful of counties in the Chicago area, and we can all help you in preparing and try to connect you with other advocates and things like that, see what's available in the state and in your area. Um, so the one person did clarify, they said there were pets in the community. Oh, our electronic pets? Is that what you Maybe mean? Maybe it must be. They said oh, they were we do. the communication Yes, devices. we have a, we have actually, so we have several types of electronic pets. Uh, we do. We have some that are little robots that are, um, they, they're, um, designed to interact with children who need to, well, they're safe interaction for one thing. Um, you, you really can't hurt the electronic pets. Um, some of them are also good for sensory issues. Uh, so we also have some little robot people as well that um, interact in some of the same ways. Uh, they are expensive. Uh, they're, they're very expensive, but you can borrow some of them. I think we have some in device loan. We also have some of the uh, more furry ones. We have a couple of cats. Um, that's uh, per and um, they've been great also for some seniors that are, have had some cognitive decline. Um, they are very soothing. Um, the ones in the communication area are a little bit more advanced in that they will actually interact with you as opposed to um, the, the furry ones that you just pet and they purr in your lap. They're quite soothing. <laughs> I do think I remember seeing those when we toured um, mm -hmm. now that you mention it. Okay, yeah. the last question it looks like we have is, are non-U.S. citizens eligible for services? Uh, it depends on, on what the service is. Um, if you're in the state of Illinois, if this is where you live, we're certainly, um, yeah, you could have a, you could have a tour. You, if you have an address here, you could borrow a device from us. Um, the, some of the other programs, like the evaluation programs, they're tied specifically to whether it be State Board of Education or Division of Rehabilitation Services. Um, in those instances, you'd have to have a referral from one of those places. But um, our other programs, I, I would think so, yes, you'd be able to participate. Okay, the only other question I see, I think you've already addressed that about finding possible sources of insurance does not cover a device. I believe you covered that. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like that is all of the questions that we have. Um, we did get a comment saying this has been a great webinar and they're very glad they joined the session. So um, I really appreciate um, all the information that you've shared today and all of your knowledge and um, appreciate you taking time out of your day. Please, if you're on still, go ahead and take that survey when you leave the webinar and just give us feedback. And um, yeah, we're getting a lot of comments saying this was a great webinar. So I think this was yeah. really helpful. I know I talked fast and I'm sorry, but we have so many programs. I wanted to make sure I got through them. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's great information. And like I said, the recording will be on our um, website. Um, since there were some issues, we do recognize and apologize that there were some issues with a few people being able to get on um, at the time of the webinar. So we will make sure that recording link is sent out to participants this week. We'll get that done and we will make sure to send out the PowerPoint as well so we know that everyone was able to access everything. But if you have any questions, just reach out. So thank you again. Have a good day, everyone. All right, All right thanks. Thanks, bye.